Okay, good day, good people. Uh, let us look at the cantilevers. Okay, what is a cantilever? A cantilever is a beam fixed on one end, fixed on one end, and on the other end it is free, like this one here. You can tell one side it is fixed. And on the other end, the, it is what? It is free, right? It is free. It is not fixed. That's what the cantilever is. Now, this cantilever, you can tell there's no reactional support uh, beneath this cantilever. The only reactional support we have here, it is on the fixed point. If you are given this type of a beam here, cantilever, please make note. The reactional support, the reactional support, support, it's on the, is on the fixed point. If you are given such a cantilever, please make note that the only reactional support we have, it's on the fixed point. Another thing, if you are given this type of a cantilever, there's no need for you to apply uh, to apply the law of moment whereby you have to take moment also and say some of the clockwise forces equals to some of the anti-clockwise forces on this cantilever it is not applicable the fact that we are having one reactional support on the fixed point then you will say some of the upward forces equals to some of the downward forces now the, the 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 upward force the only upward force we have it is the force on the fixed point that is the only upward force we have there it is the force on the fixed point equals to the downward force the only down the, the downward forces that we have it is the 20 plus remember here we are having the utl we then have to convert the UTL into what? A concentrated load. Now, what does the UTL simply mean? Sim UTL, it's a uniformly distributed load. It is. It can either be uh, a distributed by sections or the whole span of what? Of the beam. In this case, it is distributed evenly so as per the section. Now, we then have to convert it. In converting it, we are having 6 kilonewton per meter now this in interpreting it you are simply saying for every meter the six kilonewton now how many meters do we have here two it means how many six kilonewtons we have 12 because for every meter there's what the six kilonewton it means it will be six plus six equals to what 12 then it will be multiplied by two meters uh, it will be multiplied by two meters all right two meters here don't forget that it is per meter yes there it is per meter now bases are the same what do we do with exponents we add them anything to the power zero it is that number it will be six multiplied by two equals to 12 kilonewton we have converted now the utl into a concentrated load after you have converted it as a golden rule or as a matter of fact, you need to put it at the center of that distance, at the center of this distance. Why are we putting it at the center of that distance? You are simply indicating that there's still a, a, an evenly spread load there. There's still an evenly spread load. But for us to be able to work with that evenly spread load, we have to convert it to a, to a concentrated load. You will put it at the center. In the center there, it will be 2 divided by 2. It will be 1. That would be the center of that displacement. Then you put your 12 kilonewton there. Now, the downward forces, you are having 12 and you are having 20 kilonewton. Now, let's give you another picture on the UTL. A UTL is an extra load on top of the beam, and it's exerting what? A downward force. Yeah? That's another way of looking at the UTL. Now, here, coming here, it will be upward forces. The only upward force we have, like I've indicated, it is on the fixed point. Plus the downward force we have, it is 20 plus 12. It then means equals to what? To 32 kilonewton. It then means the force on the fixed point, it is what? It is 32 
kilo newton. This is how you work out the reactional support on your county lever. Now, we said it as a matter of fact that when coming to shear force diagram, when coming to shear force diagram, let me wipe here. When coming to the shear force diagram, we said on all given forces, or rather when drawing the shear force diagram and the bending moment, for you to be able to draw them, we said, we said, let me take your attention to the small Ayana nodes here. Right. We said on all given, when we draw the shear force diagram, on all given forces, you draw a vertical straight line. On all given forces, like in this case, in this case, we are having the given forces. These are given forces, forces which comes with your, you draw the vertical straight line, like I did there. On all given forces, this is a converted force here. We don't draw nothing. That 12 is a converted force here where the UTL ends as well. You draw what? The vertical straight line because your UTL, it has an effect from the fixed point to where two meter ends. Now, hence, you are supposed to draw the vertical straight line. Now, it is, we are having a force there. We will draw the vertical straight line as well. Then we will replicate our beam with the horizontal straight line because we know that we need to start at zero and end where? At zero when we are drawing what? Our, our shear force diagram. Let's make it blue. Now we know that we need to start at zero and end at zero. Now let's come back to these nodes of mine here. Let's come back to this note of mine here. Right. This is the point number one. We did exactly that. When drawing a shear force diagram on all given forces, you draw a vertical straight line. Check. We did that. Then you apply the number line principle in drawing your shear force diagram. What is the number line principle as I would normally uh, call it, that you, you apply the number line principle? Uh, the number line principle, it's simply the principle that you take when working with forces. What is a force? Force is a vector. It has two things. Now, same thing with, uh, it has two things. It has magnitude and direction. Now, that's where the number line principle comes in. We know that all forces going up, they are positive. Forces going towards east, positive, uh, south, negative, um west they are negative now when you take your number line uh, 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 principle you know that going up you are having positive values going down you are having what negative values going towards east positive values going towards uh west negative values that is why i like to to, to, to make the emphasis uh, uh, using the number line principle because we all know the number line principle. We did it from elementary school or level. Now, that's what we will be applying to draw what uh, the shear force diagram. But when drawing your shear force diagram on the cantilever, it doesn't matter whether you start on the free end or you start on the fixed point. It doesn't matter. Now, why it doesn't matter? It is because of the, if, if you start it on the free end, you draw it or you start it on the fixed point. One of those diagram, it is the inverted image of the other diagram. This is what I'm, 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 I'm indicating on point number three. You can either draw your shear force diagram from the free end or fixed point. It matters not. One will be the inverted image of the other. And of which in this case, I will draw two shear force diagrams. I will start one on the fixed point. Then I will start one on the free end just to uh, show you what I'm talking about. Now, we'll start the first one from the free end. Now, on this line, I'm having a downward force. It's a negative force. Uh, then I will represent it as somewhere there. Okay, can I represent it as somewhere there? Let's take the bold red there. 
Right, we are having that force. Now, between this line and that line, there's nothing. Remember that force there, it is what? It is negative 20. It's going down, it is negative. Okay, it's going down, it is negative. We are having what? A negative 20 there, kilo newton. You need to write your SI units as well. Right. Now, between this line and that line, there's nothing there. Since well, there's nothing, I will represent that force as a straight, as a straight line. Right. Now, between this point and that point, I'm having... A uniformly distributed load and we know that the uniformly distributed load we represent it as what as a diagonal line now i'm having negative 20 negative 20 plus negative 12 equals to negative 32 now i will represent that negative 32, since well, there's a UDL, I will represent it as a diagonal line, like this. Now, on this line, on this line, I'm having an upward force. Please don't forget that on your fixed point, don't forget that on your fixed point, you are having an upward force. On the fixed point, you are having what? An upward force here. On what? On the fixed point. Remember when we are calculating the reactional support, we said it that the only upward force we have is on the fixed point. And all forces going up, they are what? They are positive. Now, it will be negative 32. Remember that we have what? Negative 32 here. We are having negative 32 kilonewton. Right. Because we said negative 20 plus negative 12 the negative 12 from here from the conversion of your udl then we are having negative 32 plus the positive 32 that we've calculated here then it will be 32 plus 32 equals to what equals to zero as a golden rule of drawing there shear force diagram we know that we need to start at zero and end at what at zero that's exactly what we did here we started at zero we ended at what at zero because when you replicate your beam you you need to indicate this is the zero point this is the zero point here we started at zero we ended at what? At zero. Now, this uh, uh, shear force diagram, you, we started it at what? At the fixed point. At the free end, I mean to say. Now, we started it at what? At the free end. Now, let's start. Uh, now, let's do the other one, starting from the fixed point heading towards the free end. Like I said, the other one will be the inverted image of the other one. Now, on the fixed point, we are having an upward force. We are having an upward force, and that force, it is what? It is 32. Can I then represent my 32 as somewhere there? Right, let's make it bold blue. Okay, let's make it bold uh, green. Okay, that's what we have there. Now, that, that, that's your 32, positive 32 there. We are having 32 kilonewton there. I'll write it as black here on this point. On this point, right. Remember, we're starting at zero. We end at zero. Now, between this line and that line, we are having a UDL. Then it will be 32 minus 12 the downward force there it is what it is 12 then we get our answer as 20 positive 20 can i then represent it as somewhere there the fact that there's a udl i then have to 
represent that force as a diagonal line. Now, between this point and that point, there's nothing there. Then I will be representing that force as a straight line. Now, this point here, it is what? It is 20. All right, don't forget that here you are having what? 20. You are having 20 kilonewton here on this point here right now on this line what do we have we are having a downward force we are having a downward force it will be 20 positive 20 minus 20 the fact that it's going down it is what negative right boom that's what we have as our cantilever you see that this one you can tell that this one you can tell that this one is an inverted image of that one now when coming to the shear force it doesn't matter whether you start from the free end this one we started at the free end let's indicate this one free end oh, sorry about that this one we started at the fixed point can tell one it is what the mirror image of the other now when coming to the shear force this it is permissible you can start it at the fixed point or free end it doesn't matter your shear force diagram will be correct but let's look at bending moment let's look at the bending moment let's uh, look at the bending moment uh, let me i start removing things there let's look at the bending moment a bit okay right now let's let's wipe okay bending moment when coming to the bending moment please make note when coming to the bending moment when calculating bending moment you always calculate it from the free end towards fixed point now when coming to bending moment good people please make note you start your 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 bending moment from the from the free end going towards this is where you start heading towards the fixed point always you start from the free end going towards the fixed point now we know that when we calculate the bending moment it is bending moment equals to plus or minus force multiply by perpendicular distance uh, let's write it distance okay that's the formula plus or minus the plus or minus there indicates the direction of the force if it is going up it's a positive force if it's going down it's a negative force this is the formula that we will be using to calculate our bending moment now if we denote this as our a b c now we'll then calculate bending moment at a we know that bending moment at free end it is zero now bending moment at a it will be zero kilo newton meter there's nothing to bend here bending moment at a it is zero kilo newton meter now let's look at the second point here the first point that's the one that i've just indicated when calculating bending moment you always calculate it from the free end towards the fixed point then the second point says the maximum bending moment is always at your fixed point your maximum bending moment it is here at the fixed point that's where your p max is don't make a point don't, don't don't make a mistake that's where your maximum bending moment is why it is because of whenever you calculate your bending moment you start at free end you are going towards the fixed point now at the fixed point that's where your maximum bending moment will be now coming to this one bending moment at a it is zero then bending moment at b it will be negative 20 multiply by perpendicular distance from here to there it is two multiply by two equals to negative 40 kilo newton meter right then bending moment at c that's where your maximum bending moment is bending moment at c it will be it will be negative 
20 multiply by perpendicular distance that would be 4 it is negative because this force it is going down plus negative 12 negative 12 because this force it is going where it is going down right multiply by negative 12 multiply by perpendicular distance it is 1 then bending moment at c it will be It will be 92, negative. It will be negative 92 kilonewton meter. Boom. Now, you can tell this value, it is bigger than this value. Obviously, this value it is bigger than zero. That is why your maximum bending moment, it will always be at what? At fixed point. This is the maximum bending. Now, in exam, if they say to you, what is the maximum bending moment please give them the value that you would have calculated at what at the fixed point and in this case it is negative uh, 92 kilonewton meter this is how you work out your cantilever i will later on drop other videos on 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 the different uh, cantilevers and their solution but for now go through this material digest it then i will drop another one thank you good people